Hello everyone, it's so good to see you again. It's Miss Natalie, and today I thought we would talk a little bit more about flowers. Flowers are one of my favorite things that start growing during this time of year of spring. Now there are different parts to a flower, and I have some words that I'm going to share with you. So the first part of a flower that I thought we would talk about is this part right here that grows down into the ground. Do you know what that's called? Those are the roots. Root starts with the letter R. I'm going to put this right here so that we remember this part that grows down into the ground are called the roots. Now, what is this part that grows up out of the ground? Do you remember? That part of the flower or plant is called the stem. Stem starts with the letter S. I'm going to put that right here so that we remember this is the stem. Off of the stem, are these kind of triangular shaped leaves? So here is the word leaf. Now leaf just means one, but if you say leaves, that means more than one. So I'm going to put leaf right here that starts with the letter O L. And this flower has two leaves. And the last part, up here at the top, this is where the flower is. Flower starts with an F. Put that right up here at the top. So we have flower, leaf, stem, and root. Now, we have our flower, but do you remember what these are called that grow out of the center of the flower? Those are the petals of the flower. Now, the root grows down into the ground, and they need food from the soil. And that's how the stem starts to grow. The roots get food from the soil, and those nutrients from the food from the soil make the stem grow up. Plants and flowers also need sunlight to grow. And do you remember the last thing? We talked about this last week. Plants also need water or rain to grow. So there are three things that flowers need to grow. They need food or soil from the ground. They need sunshine or light. And they need water or rain. And all of those three things help the roots grow, which helps the stem and the leaves grow, and then the flower will bloom at the top. This over here is called the life cycle of a plant. Do you remember how we talked about trees and plants starting out as something very small in the ground? This is the first part of our life cycle of a plant. Do you remember what that was called? A seed. So a flower or a plant starts out as a tiny little seed in the ground. That is the first step of the life cycle of a plant. Next, follow the arrow. We come down here. The roots start to grow from the seed. And the stem and the leaves start to grow, and that is called the sprout. So the next part of the life cycle of a plant or a flower is a sprout. That's the second step. We follow the arrow around in our life cycle, and the stem gets taller and more leaves start to grow. This is called a mature plant. See how it's getting taller and bigger? It is growing up a little bit more, so it is called a mature plant. That's 
the third step in our life cycle of a plant. And there's one more step. The last step, if you follow the arrow around, is when the flower blooms. So that's called the flower. That is our last step in the life cycle of a plant. So we have a seed that grows into a sprout, then a mature plant, and then a flower. I'll bring this a little bit closer so you can see. Do you see all the steps of the life cycle of a plant? Seed, sprout, mature plant, and then flower. So I have a very special book for us to read together that talks about one of my favorite kind of flowers. Starts with the letter S. A sunflower. That is one of my favorite kinds of flowers. A sunflower. This book is called Camille and the Sunflowers. A story about Vincent Van Gogh. It was written by Lawrence Anholt. Vincent Van Gogh, this man right here, was a very famous painter. And he is really famous for making this picture, this painting of sunflowers. You may have heard of him. But if not, we'll read about him right now. I want to make sure you can be able to see the pictures. There we go. Where, oh, did I skip a page? Where Camille lived, the sunflowers grew so high, they looked like real sun. A whole field of burning yellow sun. Every day after school, Camille ran through the sunflowers to meet his father, who was the postman. Together they would lift down the heavy sacks of mail. One day, a strange man arrived in Camille's town. He had a straw hat, a yellow beard, and quick brown eyes. Do you see him getting off the train? That's Vincent. I am Vincent the painter, he said, smiling at Camille. Vincent came to live in the yellow house at the end of Camille Street. He had no money and no friends. tried to help him, said Camille's father. So they loaded the cart with pots and pans and furniture for the yellow house. That was nice of them. Camille picked a huge bunch of sunflowers for the painter and put them in a big brown pot. Vincent was very pleased to have two good friends. Vincent asked Camille's father if he would like to have his picture painted, dressed in his best blue uniform. You must sit very still, said Vincent. Camille loved the bright colors Vincent used and the strong smell of paint. As Camille watched, his father's face appeared like magic on the canvas. The picture was strange but very beautiful. Vincent said he would like to paint the whole family. Camille's mother, his big brother, and his baby sister. And 
at last Camille himself. Camille was very excited. He had never even had his picture taken with a camera. Camille took his paintings to school. He wanted everyone to see it. But the other children didn't like it, like the picture. They all began to laugh. This made Camille feel very sad. That's not nice of them to laugh. After school, some of the older children started teasing Vincent. They ran along behind him as he went out to paint. Even the grown-ups joined in. It's time he got a real job, they said, instead of playing with paints all day. That's not nice. Camille sat for hours watching Vincent work. It was very hot, but Vincent worked very fast. He painted the sunflower fields and even the sun itself. He is the sunflower man, said Camille to himself. But no matter how hard Vincent worked, he could never sell any of his paintings. If I had a lot of money, said Camille, I would like to buy them all. Thank you, my friend, laughed Vincent. One afternoon, as Camille and Vincent were coming back from the field, some of the children from Camille's school were waiting. They shouted at Vincent and threw stones at him. That is not kind. Camille wanted them to stop, but what could he do? He was only a small boy. At last, he ran home in tears. Listen, Camille, said his father. People often laugh at things that are different, but I've got a feeling that one day they will learn to love Vincent's painting. That night, Camille had a strange dream. He saw Vincent standing in the moonlight high above the town. Vincent had stuck candles on his hat so that he could see. The sunflower man was painting the stars. Early the next morning, Camille was awakened by a loud knocking at the door. Some men from the town had come to see his father. Listen, postman, they said. We want you to give this letter to your friend. It says he must pack up his paints and leave our town. Camille slipped out through the back door. He ran down the street to the yellow house. It seemed very quiet inside. Then Camille saw the sunflowers he had picked for Vincent that had all dried up and died. Camille felt sadder than ever. Vincent was upstairs packing his bags. He looked very tired, but he smiled at Camille. Don't be sad, he said. It's time for me to paint somewhere else now. Perhaps they will like my painting there. But first I have something to show you. Vincent lifted down a big picture. There were Camille's sunflowers, bigger and brighter than ever. Camille looked at the painting. Then he smiled, too. Goodbye, sunflower man, he whispered, and ran out of the yellow house and into the sunshine. Camille's father was right. People did learn to love Vincent's painting. Today, you would have to have a lot of money if you wanted to buy one. But now, people all over the world go to museums and galleries just to see Vincent's paintings of the Yellow House, of Camille and his family, and especially the picture of the sunflowers. So bright and yellow, they look like real sun. The end. So... Sunflowers, because they're one of my favorite flowers, I thought I would show all of you how to draw your very own picture of a sunflower.
So over here, I have this picture that I made of a sunflower. Isn't it cute? Do you see what shapes there are? There's a circle in the middle. And she circles for the eyes. There's a curve with a smile. And there's these long, kind of oval shapes with a point at one end for the petal and for the leaves. And there's kind of a squiggly shape down here at the bottom for the stem. So, if you have a piece of paper and something to draw with, I can help you learn how to draw this picture of a sunflower. You could use crayons if you have those. You could paint with watercolor, which is what I did here. I used crayons to draw the shapes, and I used watercolor to paint inside the shapes. You could use colored pencils if you have those. Or, like I'm going to use today, you could use markers. So, when I painted this picture, I decided to use crayons and paint. But today, to show you, I'm going to choose markers. I'm going to take this picture down, and I'm going to put a new piece of paper up to show you how to draw this picture. Now you can just have your piece of paper down on the table while you're drawing. So you have to choose what you want to draw with. And something that's really good about watching this video is you can pause the video, go get what you need, and then come back and unpause the video to finish watching. But I'm going to go ahead and get started on how to show you how to draw picture of a sunflower. So the first thing I'm going to do is draw all of the shapes that I will need for my picture. And I'm going to use a sharpie, but you can use crayon, you can use colored pencil, you can use a marker, whatever you have, okay friends? The first thing that we're going to draw are two circles for the eyes of the sunflower. Now, do real sunflowers really have eyes? No, they don't. But it's okay to draw things to make them look like they have a face when you're just making a fun picture. What you're going to do, you're going to draw, and you can make this as big or as little as you want. So this sunflower was kind of big, but I think today I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. So you can draw one circle right here. See it? And then another circle right next to it. Just like that. Now, inside of my sunflower's eyes, there's two little tiny circles. One at the bottom and one at the top. You don't have to draw them, but I'm going to draw them in my picture. I'm going to draw a little bit of a bigger circle up here, and then a little bit of a smaller one down here. And if you need to pause it, if I'm going too fast, you can just pause this video and then unpause it when you're finished and ready to move on. So I'm going to draw my other eye. A little bit bigger of a circle at the top, and a smaller circle at the bottom. Now what this does is it makes the sunflower's eyes look like they're shining bright. So what you're going to want to do next is just color in your eyes with the black marker. But don't color in the two little small circles that we made inside of the eyes. Just color around them. There's one eye. And here is the other eye. Just color around those little tiny circles that you made. Don't fill them in. 
And if this is a little bit too hard for you, you don't have to make the circles inside the eyes. You can just make them black and just color the whole thing in if you want. But if you want to try making the little circles inside the eyes, you can. The next thing that we are going to do, we're going to draw a bigger circle around the eyes. So you'll just start up here at the top. And like our letter O, or like the circle, you start at the top. Curve, make your C curve. And then curve all the way back around. And if it's not exactly perfect, that's okay. It doesn't have to be an exact perfect circle. Mine's a little lopsided because I'm drawing over from the side and it's a little bit tricky. The next thing you're going to do, you're going to make a little smile right in the middle. Like that. Right. And remember, you can always pause and then come back when you're ready. The next thing that we're going to do, we are going to draw the petals of our flower. So these shapes that you see come out to a point and then come back in to the flower. Now, if you start to kind of curve instead of come to a point, that's perfectly fine. You're just going to draw petals. What I'm going to do, I'm going to draw a line that comes up like that. And then I'm going to draw a line that kind of curves back down like that. And then I'm going to do another one on the bottom. A line that curves out. And then a line that curves back in like that. On the side, I'm going to draw the same thing, a line that curves out to a point, and then a line that curves back. This kind of looks like the letter V down here. So if it helps, you could start out here and draw your letter V like that, and then make a line that curves back to your circle. And then I'm going to draw one here. I'll do it this way again. I'll make the letter V and then I'll curve my line back to the circle. Just like that. Or you can do it this way. You can make your line curve and stop and then curve and stop. Just like that. And you keep filling in the spaces all around your flower. Curve and stop. Curve and stop. Curve and stop. Curve and stop. Now, you can stop here if that's how many petals you want. Or you can add some more petals that will look like they're kind of behind these ones. So the way I'm going to do that, I'm going to start here at this petal. And I'm just going to do the same thing. Curve and stop. And this time it will only come back down to this petal. See how it started at this line here? And stopped at this line, at that petal. And that makes it look like this petal is behind these two petals. Now you can add those if you want all around your sunflower. Or you don't have to. That's okay as well. I'm just going to keep going around my circle and adding more petals. And I guess my sunflower turned out just as big as my other one. That's okay. Look at all those petals. Looking pretty good. Okay, so the next part that we need to add is stem down at the bottom. Now what you can do is either make a straight line down for the stem 
or you can make a squiggly line like this. So you're going to start here at the petals and you're just going to make a squiggly line that goes to the bottom. And then you can <clears throat> go right next to it and make another squiggly line that matches the first one. And if you want to add some leaves onto your stem, they're kind of like the same shape as the petals. So you're just going to make a line, a curvy line that goes out, and then a curvy line that goes in. Just like that. And a curvy line that goes out, and a curvy line that goes in. And there are my leaves. And you can add a line in the middle, too, if you want to make it look even more like a leaf. And that is how draw a sunflower. Now remember, you can always pause the video if I'm going too fast. The last part that we need to do, we need to color in our sunflower. Now I won't color in my whole sunflower because that would take a long time, but I will show you the colors that I am going to use and then you can color in your whole sunflower picture at home. So, for the petals, what color do you think I should use? I think I should use a yellow. They are bright like the sun. So you're just going to color in your petals color yellow. Now remember you don't have to use markers if you don't want to. You can use crayons, you can use colored pencils, you can even get some watercolor paint or any other kind of paint that you have at home and you can use that to color your picture. I'll color just a couple more so you can see that we're going to color all of these sunflowers petals bright yellow. So, I'll do one at the top. And one on the side. So, you would continue and color all of your petals that you have drawn with the color yellow. Next, I am going to color the center of my sunflower. You could either color it brown if you want, or I'm going to color mine orange. Because sometimes there are some sunflowers that have a little bit of an orange center. So I'm just going to pick my orange and fill in this big circle with orange. And you want to color around the eyes so that they don't turn orange. Add in. Starting to look bright and beautiful, just like the sun. And that is why these are called sunflowers. So there we go. My middle part is now colored orange. What color do you think I should color the leaves and the stems down here at the bottom? I think. I should color them green. So you can get your green marker or green crayons and color in the leaves. And you can color in the stem too. I like making long strokes like this with my markers. 
that doesn't take as much time to color when you do long strokes like that. And I'll color in my other leaf really quick. And there you have it. There is our beautiful sunflower. Now after I finish this video, I'm going to finish coloring in my yellow sun petals for my sunflower. And you guys can finish as well. And remember, you can always rewind and watch again if you need to remember how to do something and you missed a step. That's what's great about videos is you can pause and rewind and skip forward. And I hope that you had so much fun learning all about flowers and the life cycle of a flower, the different parts of a flower. I hope you enjoyed reading about Vincent Van Gogh and his beautiful sunflowers and making your very own picture of a sunflower. All right, friends, I will see you next time. I miss you so much, and I can't wait to see you again. Bye, friends!